So coming to fourth subject, that is system software. I will be discussing with you system software that is 18 MCA 34. This new scheme has come into effect from 1819 academic year, where one of for I me mean, one batch of your seniors have already pursued this particular program, uh, this course rather, and this is again available for you as well, maybe for the one more year. So this subject 18 MCA 34 is precisely about as the name says system software. We'll discuss in depth once we, we, we deal with the general topics about the third semester. And coming to testing, I think you all have chosen the software testing as one of the elective. So we had a elaborative discussions on which elective to take and which elective to give up from our end to start with. And uh, you, we have advised you and you have actively taken that subject. And that is again more important, especially from MCA point of view. You will be learning something on a, a manual type of testing, a theoretical testing subject through this particular course. But we have planned something for you on the value added course, wherein maybe a tool like Selenium may be taught to you so that you can learn something a practical because Selenium is a tool which is being used in the industry today as far as automation testing is concerned. So having learned the basics or fundamentals behind the testing, if you learn something or if you have the knowledge of an automation testing, that is the beauty of what you can start working in the industry. So probably at the end of the semester, you should have some hands on on the testing as well. That is a plan we have for you at least for this particular semester. So we, in addition to these five theory subjects, we have a three laboratories. As we said, we have a DBMS laboratory, which is important where we have certain programs where you will be uh, writing some, uh, what to say, maybe Oracle related queries and executing them with various type of uh, intricacies that are, that are used rather in the uh, preparing a schema or preparing a diagram or uh, getting the data, what is required from a multiple tables, connecting that, that will be fun actually, but you should be able to learn from the uh, learning perspective as well. Okay. Second, we have Python laboratory, which is very important as we said earlier, and Python lab also you should be devoting a lot of time. So to understand beyond the curriculum. So don't be confined to the curriculum what you have, please think something beyond the curriculum as well. Now the third sub third laboratory, of course, algorithm laboratory. As I said, it is just a continuation of your data structure. Since you could not do some of the programs in data structures in campus, probably this is an opportunity for you to redo. Probably I suggest when you start this programming of ADA, since I, I don't know whether Sir will be able to take this week because he's busy with examination work. I suggest from uh, learning perspective that you just go back to the data structures and start exploring those programs with you if you are not done for whatever the reasons but maybe next one week or so if you can execute some of those data structures program that will give a what to say a clarity that with which we are going to the ADA or maybe the foundation which is required for the design and analysis of algorithms so this is a brief description about the subjects what we will be having in third semester and third semester subjects are very very important for you at least dbms python and to some extent about the testing. This they are going to help you in long run or maybe in placement as well. So coming back to the other two, that is design analysis of algorithms, as I said, it's just extension of data structures that also is required for you from learning perspective. And if you can understand what type of algorithms are there, what are the varieties of design techniques that are possible in ADA or maybe the design of algorithms and how to optimize a given algorithm. What you should be learning at the end of the day from ADA is how to optimize a given algorithm that is more important because optimization is something which is very very critical and crucial for example if i am able to write a program in 10 lines which takes say 10 minutes every time people will ask you can i reduce to eight minutes can I reduce to seven minutes so that comes only when you know how to optimize a particular program optimize means without compromising on the quality of the program how i can reduce the or to say uh, length of the program or how we can reduce the time taken for execution of the program this is precisely what you mean by optimization and that is why something precisely people will be looking at you through this setup and the last but not the least the system software as the name says it will give you a perspective completely how as the name says or uh, the title suggests the system related software which you have been using without knowing we have been using androids in our smartphones we have been using iOS in our smartphones. We have been using Microsoft Windows in our desktop or laptop. We have been using Linux or Unix. So we have been using so many softwares and these softwares come into the category called as a system software. So we'll maybe in short while from now, we'll dwell into that in, in deep how, what is about the system software. So this is a, a plain introduction about the third semester. 
So any clarification required at this point of time? No, sir. Yes. Fine. Okay. So let me begin. Let me start projecting something. Let me see if it is visible to you. I just framed some of the points here to be part of our today's discussion. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, fine. Sir. Yeah. So, official welcome to System Software, that is 18 MCA 34, which we'll be discussing as part of our core course under third semester, whose code is 18 MCA 34. System Software earlier was also called the system programming. System programming means we used to have some of the labs where like in the form of Lex and Act, we'll discuss that again. And through those laboratory, we used to write some of the programs and see how system software can be simulated or visualized. So later since lab is removed, the entire subject has been renamed as a system software, which is a, an apt name for this. So before we go to in detail, so let us have the agenda for the today's discussion. So before, before that, let us see what a program is precisely as the definition is concerned and what do you mean by software and typical types or branches of software, what we will be discussing in that what if, uh, for differences or comparison we can see. And since we are talking about a course, let us see what outcomes we are going to expect at the end of this course and what is the relevance of this course in today's world. This is what we precisely planned for today. So before we go to the next topic, probably let me have a quick responses from some of you. What do you mean by a program? How do you define a program in the present context? A type of a brainstorming let us do now. What do you mean by a program? Define a program or how do you perceive a program? Sir, it's nothing but to instruct a system how to operate. Okay. Yeah. That is a program or software? I mean, we'll write a program to like uh, how the system to work, like to how to operate, like the program. We'll write like that is meant by program. Okay. What Fine. I mean, yeah. If that is confusing. Let me ask you in different way. How do you differentiate between a program and software? A collection of programs. Software. Collection of? So, uh, programs. Yeah. It's a software. Okay, fine. So, then how do you perceive a program? So you mean to say a program is a subset of your software? Yes, sir. Okay, but what Spurti was telling is program will be able to do something. So, will the program will be able to do something or not? Yes, sir. The software is also made yes, for the same purpose, no? Yes. Program is used to execute a software, sir. Program is used to execute a software. Do you mean to say program is uh, above software? Uh, <laughs> I think, well, you go ahead. Or do you see the program and software, the perspective, your perception about these two? Okay, you write a program, no? Write a share in Unix to do this particular identified files. You say it is a program. Agree? Yes, sir. You will never say it is a software. Says the program, the word has been coined such that when you are performing a very, very small task, maybe a trivial task, I can say. So it is only one task, maybe independent, standalone task. You take an ATM, let us say. In ATM, we have so many activities right from inserting a card till you take a printout of the transaction. The insertion of the card is one activity. Verifying the card is valid or not is another activity. Once you validate whether you want to withdraw money, you want to check the balance or whatever the stuff is individual activities. They have been that means your program is one which is going to do a particular a trivial task, meaning that you can't further divide it. 
So if that is the case, probably we can look at a program as a, a bottom level. If you take a tree in your data structures, nodes are nothing but programs. So you can't further define. I mean, uh, uh, distribute. No, the leaf nodes are end. You can't further distinguish or you can't further divide them. So if that is the case, probably in a structure of a piece of software package, the programs are nothing but the the low level or the uh, tree nodes. Uh, leaf nodes in the a given tree structure so that is a program in the sense if you want to define a program program is nothing but a set of instructions that accomplish a particular task which is an independent task let us say then what is the software then is it clear program yes sir yes right so that's what we say normal programs means they're very very small and i mean a small uh, type of entities let us say which will be able to do some small activities or maybe a, a typical activities which are at the uh, independent level or standalone level so if you want to define a software probably we can say that when you group these programs together i say that atm software a company by name xyz has given atm software what do you mean by that so ATM software means they have a soft program for inserting card, they have a program for validating the user, they have a program for dispersing money, they have a program for printing the receipt, they have a program for everything, but they are not giving in the individual pattern, but they have grouped together as a package, as a software. If that is the case, probably we can define a software as a, a group of programs. We have defined program as a group of instructions. Similarly, software can be defined as a group or set of programs which can be clubbed together or uh, put to together in a shell or nutshell which can be used for a particular bigger task again if you take one software for atm that is only for atm i cannot use it for library management system so for every bigger task we can have some packages and those packages are nothing but your software so if you want to define a program is nothing but a, a set of instructions while a software is nothing but a set of programs or an amalgamation of programs, a group of programs put together, they will be able to accomplish a specific task. If that is the case, probably software can be defined. So is that okay? Any confusion? No, sir. Fine. Now, having said that, this is software. Today's world, maybe these definitions have been coined maybe 20 years back, still they are worth. But today we see very thin difference between software and program. That is a probably reason why some of you could not uh, see the uh, difference between them. So, but if you want to define from the uh, computer perspective, this is how we can define. But we have been using these names very interchangeably. Being an IT person, you cannot be having any confusion. So that is the reason why you should have a clarity between what a program from the program perspective, which is a group of instructions for the standalone unit of work. Whereas the software is, it is a bigger task where we are going to group those programs to again fulfill some of the independent tasks, but put together in a nutshell. For example, it can be online reservation system, right from you log in till you book a ticket and take a printout. There is one piece of software which is going to help you. If that is the case, probably we can, we can say that is a, a software, one full package, a package type of uh, uh, managing your requirements. Similarly, you have a Microsoft Word wherein you open the Word, you create a document, modify the document, save the document, you do everything and again you can open, edit, all those things are possible. That is purpose of a, another software which is going to help you for that particular purpose. But precisely, software is nothing but a group of programs that can be used to accomplish a specific, a bigger sizable task compared to program. So program and software, they have the same underlying meaning but only the volume is different program is confined to very small tasks but software is confined to multiple tasks that's how we can see them now coming to the types of software so we have majorly two types of software one is a system software other one is a application software majorly then we can talk about uh, middleware we can talk about general purpose there, there we can divide them but logically we can define a software into two basic entities called as a system software and application software. So I've heard about these two earlier, application software, system software. Yes, sir. Yes. 
any some inputs anjana in what perspective you understood or which one you 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 feel this is a system software that i have used or this is application software that i have used so application software basically means the which we use i mean like applications uh, uh, mobile mm. applications uh, okay and the system software is which is basically used to control the system i mean the mobile or something okay software is the main and the application software which we install data Fine. Fine. Like uh, any apps, please. Okay, good idea. So application can be uh, application starts by the user and ends by the user, and okay. a system is it works uh, till the power on and till the uh, till it shut down, sir. Okay, okay. Correct. Lane, go ahead. Yes. Any other differences? Anything else? That's all. Anything else? Have received some material I have sent through Google Classroom. Any of you could receive that material? Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. So because I should do one o'clock just to check whether it reaches or not. So that precisely contains what we are discussing today. You, you need not go through that now. You can keep that with you later. You can just go through that to understand what to discuss today. So fine. Any quick inputs again on system software that you perceive or application software that you met on come across for last five ten years? Sir, system software means it is built-in software, sir. Okay, fine. Sir, uh, in uh, application, I have to download and it. Uh, I, sir, I do download. Mind you, now use more things. System software. Any examples? Any examples? Sir, you can now. You can now get system sir, software. Sir. Andre, mainly. Sir, sir I, system I software, sir. Operating system like uh, uh, Windows or uh, Windows or uh, uh, Mac, sir. Uh, applications okay. are. Uh, Applications are softwares like uh, like everyday use. Uh, I don't know how to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So applications like games or uh, okay a browser or Chrome like that, sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yes. Fine. Fair enough. Not a, we'll we'll see the differences precisely later as well. But this is just to understand what is the information you carry with you before we. Well, in detail about the system software and application software. So, whatever you said is well valid, but let us talk from IT perspective and have a clear difference between these two. We know that both are software, and we know what a software is right now. A software is nothing but a group of programs that is supposed to accomplish a specific, maybe a size in big, bigger size task. That is a software for us, and we have defined. And we we have differentiated them in two categories. One is a system software and application software. As the name says precisely, system software is the one which is going to drive your hardware. System means what? Normally we say system for the your computer hardware. Maybe your micro mi microprocessor, maybe your internal uh, peripherals, device drivers. All these are going to be system. That's what we say. Now even if you recall the diagram, what we have for Unix. That underlying structure is a kernel hardware followed by shell. All those stuff is going to be precisely the system for us. So here also, system means we have a hardware, and that hardware need to be triggered because hardware cannot do anything on its own. Somebody has to trigger them. So triggering this hardware is precisely is what we normally term as a system software. So system software, if you want to define specifically, system software is a software that acts as a liaison between. the taxes lies in between your hardware and your uh, may, maybe the uh, user to some extent but mainly to make the system operational the system software is going to be a, a special software which is going to make your system operational that is a, a plain definition 
but we have a lot of differences when you go and see the distinction between these two will come across but precisely as the name says system software is the one which drives the system to be more functional more operational whereas application software so application softwares are plenty if you take your mobile you have hundreds of applications available each one of app that you have been using today are going to be concept of your application software meaning that they perform only that specific task they will not be able to do anything extra for example if you take a microsoft office in office we have a microsoft word we have a microsoft excel we have access powerpoint and stuff like that microsoft office is a one particular package which i call it as a application software in that i have a sub application softwares rather which are called to be microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint so whatever microsoft word does and the intention behind microsoft word cannot be achieved with the microsoft excel and vice versa it cannot be achieved with the powerpoint so mean to say that application software are a, a, are a, a specific task oriented they cannot be dreamt or they cannot be generalized in nature whereas system software yes you are telling that there is operating system of windows operating system of mac yes they have been the softwares which can be used across the country without any problem so what is underlying feature for them the specific hardware if you can meet i think those softwares can be used in general the system software always a generic in nature whereas application software is going to be very specific in nature let me give another example coming to application software so we have a library management system so library management system for uh, two colleges let us say so college x and college y so if you take a college x library management system x college will have a different stakeholders x college will have a different types of requirements x college will have a different type of books housed in that and accordingly x college library management system is different take y college y college will have again same type of i mean different type of students different type of books different type of requirements even though the library management software is the same for both x and y colleges i cannot replicate what i have used in x as it is in y because the stakeholders are different number of books are different the size of a transaction is different volume of transaction is different and the uh, requirements are different. for example in x college they may give one month duration in other college they may give one year duration see one college there is no fine another college there is a fine if a book is not returned in another college they may be giving two books in other college they may give 10 books so like that there are requirements changing in a application software so even though we say application software is going to perform a specific task the task is different from a similar kind of activities if that is the case application software is very 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 specific in nature whereas system software is very very general in nature so you can use in laptop you can use in uh, uh, intel 3 core you can use in intel 5 or you can use in dual core it doesn't matter so if a basic underlying software hardware is minimum maintained you can start using system software on any system on the earth whereas application software may not be true because if i take application software on particular purpose only that purpose will be served I cannot extend or I cannot use it for another purpose unless I do some modifications. So that's what the clear distinction what you should be having with the system software. So one is definition point of view, other one is a reach point of view. System software is general in reaching in, in nature, whereas application software is very, very specific for a, a particular problem. Take another example. For example, you want to book a, a flight reservation. So we have so many flights operating and each flight is having its own uh, way of looking if you go and open for example uh, uh, air india or if you open uh, uh, jet airways or you open uh, british airways if you open any of these application software each one will have a different uh, what you call uh, interface for the user or different applications internally different ways of uh, user satisfaction similarly your atms which is very easy which we have been using in day in day out so atms if you go to 10 atms with the same card you will have different feeling and different experience so even though they are all atm you see a lot of diversity in that application so per se application software is very very specific in nature that's what we need to understand here so that is a clear distinction between system software and application so this is for a general common person 
but today we are representing it and we are studying mca course and we are studying in detail some courses in it we should go further if any general person if somebody asks you can say system software means the software that used for the system make system operational which is generic in nature whereas application software is it is specific to application and it keeps changing from application requirement to another application requirement but coming back to our understanding system software is mission dependent what do you mean by mission dependent that means if when you want to develop a system software the question what you should be asking the other person is what type of hardware you are giving to me so that i can develop the system software now we have to think from a system software designer perspective if a particular client comes to you ask you the say hi i want to have a software for my system which is a system software so what is the first question you should be asking them well you let me know what is the architecture what is the underlying hardware for which i need to develop the software whereas if your application software another client will come and ask you look i want to you to develop a, a software for my one of the requirement what you should ask now you never ask you about the hardware you will be asking about what is the application expectations or what is the application requirement so you will be going to the very specific to the application whereas in the case of system software you are not asking about the application you are not asking about anything else you are asking the first question as what is my hardware on which my software need to be developed so that is the requirement of a system software so whenever somebody ask you as a it engineer your definition for system software should be now system software is mission dependent or architecture dependent or hardware dependent whereas application software is a specific to the application it is not depending on the operating system it is not depending on the type of hardware we have 95% it does not worry about the type of hardware i mean hardware and type of underlying os we have whereas in the case of system software yes it takes everything into account as far as the hardware is concerned that is the definition what you should be carrying from today onwards if somebody ask you what is the difference between system software and application software the beginning two is common known to everybody by the nature of the definition but you should go to the next level meaning that system software is completely the hardware dependent per se whenever you want to develop a software which is a system software you should first understand for which type of hardware i need to develop whereas in the case of application software you never ask about this you only ask about what is the expectations of my application so that is a clarity that is the actual distinction what you should be looking from the system software and application software perspective so is it clear now yes sir yes. yeah so any confusion or could you learn something today the difference between these two or it is same by end of this class you should know the clarity between why it is called system software or how you can differentiate because both are softwares very thin difference might come many times between system software and application software in fact microsoft had a, a lawsuit in us on their internet explorer what they argued that is there in records they argued internet explorer is a system software and some of you told in the discussion explorer or browser is nothing but a application software so how do you differentiate how do you say whether internet explorer or browser is a system software or a application software so there is a debate even today how we can perceive that means that's what i say at today's world today's technology there might be some confusion on what do you mean by system software how i can distinguish without any confusion or without any issue so still when we can come to this architecture dependency probably you can figure out so now you tell me you have a browser you can have a browser on any type of system you can have in your mobile you can have in your desktop laptop you tell me whether a browser for example mozilla is a system software or application software application, application sir agree but microsoft argued 10 years back it is a system software maybe at that point of time 
may be true because it was completely depending on because they were having internet explorer which was designed for a particular system in mind but not today today all these browsers are application software they do not care what type of underlying hardware we have so 10 years back what was argument today is changing so why because the dependency so for you at any point of time to differentiate between system software and application software only one punch line what is that if your software is depending on the machine in the sense architecture or hardware then we say that software is a system software whereas application software it also depends on the hardware but the percentage may be 5 to 10 percent but 90 percent of the cases application software do not consider the underlying hardware into consideration or into account it will be more worried about the type of expectations or uh, delivery or the what need to be done through this application so that is a clear difference between system software and application software so general purpose software let us not worry about that that can be of any nature but clearly a software can be bifurcated into two categories one is a system software other one is a application software so if you look at the examples operating system so many of you have told that is going to be your system software language translators all your c compiler c++ compiler java bytecode python compiler all these are going to be system software because they come with a, a specific hardware dependent i don't know if you remember in windows if you run a c program int takes how many bytes the c program if you write size of int in windows is how many bytes two, two bytes in linux Linux also two bytes. How many bytes int takes in C under Linux platform? Have you ever checked it? Four, sir. Four. Good. Why it is four now? Why not two? C is C, no? You have studied in books. C takes integer two bytes. C takes integer two bytes. But why is the difference between Windows and Linux? windows and unix in windows it is two bytes whereas in linux it is four bytes now you will come to confusion hey what is this nobody told in books that it takes two bytes in windows it takes four bytes in linux but it's a fact so why that is happening because your compiler is a architecture dependent why because it is depending on the operating system what is an operating system operating system depends on the underlying hardware so your compiler depends on os and OS depends on hardware, A is equal to B, B is equal to C, associative property, your compiler also depends on the hardware. If that is the case, your compiler is nothing but a system software. So that is the clarity what you should be having. Okay. So this is a basic idea behind system software. And whatever you have discussed, probably you can put in a nutshell. So software is divided into system software and application software. So most of your operating systems, your assemblers, compilers, debuggers, interpreters, device drivers, they all come under the concept of a system software. Why? Because they depend on the hardware part majorly. In other words, if any software that takes hardware into consideration to the major extent, we say that software is a system software. Simple. Next, application software. Your Microsoft Word, Word processor, Microsoft Excel, spreadsheet communication software maybe any software that used for communication for mailing maybe you were uh, whatsapp or stuff like that and the games that you do that you play they're all your application software database oracle oracle 10i oracle v v visual basic all those things are going to be specific to the requirement and image processing the tools what we have for the photoshop and stuff like that they're only for a particular purpose if that is the case they're all going to be under the comp point of a application software if somebody asks you to write 100 new system software you may take uh, one week or one month but if somebody asks you to write application software 100 you can write in one minute because you have so many examples of application software but system software are very very less what is the reason because system software is a general in nature it, we cannot have hundreds of system software per se. We can have maybe 10, 20, 30, depending upon the requirement, and they are going to serve the all the purposes. 
whereas application software you name a problem we have a software for that so problems are plenty obviously application software also plenty in nature so that's how we can identify the nature of uh, software or the nature behind the system software and the application software so this is how we can perceive application software and system software so we have hardware devices your hardware which comes to microprocessor or your cpu all those things are going to be your hardware devices and device drivers what are device drivers they are the elements that trigger your hardware because somebody has to get to for example you have a printer you give a print command how it knows suppose i have 10 printers connected to a one single machine how do you say my print should be coming from printer 5 how do you say my print should be coming from printer 8 of course you can choose p1 to p8 or p10 but when you choose that internally there should be a software that actually puts your data into that particular machine or particular printer and gets the work done for that purpose we require a device driver so device drivers obviously they need to work with the hardware otherwise we cannot have the device drivers are example of a system software at the very very core level on top of that we have your system software what we're talking about which is operating system your compiler your debugger assemblers interpreters and some of the utilities they sit over the device drivers on top of that we have your application program so for example i am running a, a oracle application so oracle application is a precise application for doing some oracle activities oracle required activities they in turn need to use operating system they in turn need to use some of the other system software without that your application is away so application software are completely depending on the system software but not the vice versa you are not creating a system software just for a particular application to run no you are creating a system software for a general purpose whereas your application makes use of the system software that is existing so that application can can run so applications are handled by the users of course and user is the one who is going to make use of this application this is how the hierarchy what you can see so at the bottom we have hardware on top of that we have your device drivers which are at very very low level uh, entities that deal directly with the hardware like your kernel let us say and they are having on top of them a system software like operating systems and compilers and stuff like that on top of that we can build our application programs which are finally used by the users Okay. so this is precisely the introduction behind the software system software and the application software so this is another diagram like your unix architecture which can give you a complete picture about what do you mean by a system software and what do you mean by an application software okay so next so having said that so what features we can assign for a system software now because our core discussion is around system software so it is difficult to design why do you say it is difficult to design now you will agree now so system software is difficult to design yes or no any comments on that yes sir why why do you say it is difficult to design there are so many hardwares compared to this is in comparison with application software so it's uh, written in low level okay you okay fine next yeah go ahead tell go ahead srinivas yes sir there are uh, like uh, so many hardwares and architecture to consider while uh, yes yes that is the underlying feature for any system software the first question you are going to ask is for which hardware i need to develop for example you are a software engineer today you know pentium 3 pentium 3 is different from what you are using pentium 4 or pentium 5 or core 2 to you or whatever it is because every architecture is different or today we are working on a pentium today which is in intel microchip tomorrow you are going to be working on a motorola which is a totally different perspective you may have seen it from computer organization point of view one is a little indian one is a big indian there are so much of intricacies internally so when you are asked to develop a compiler under intel architecture you had have done by learning intel for two days or three days or two weeks or two years somebody will come and ask you develop the same compiler but not for intel develop for the motorola is it going to be same definitely no maybe 20 30% it might 
be same because the process remains same but the way you need to work is totally different meaning that you should understand from the bottom what is this your motorola chip and what are the various registers we have what are the various addressing mode you have to go to very very low level deep level understanding of the chip then only you can start writing a program you may be good in python may be good in c good in java but that is not sufficient you should understand what to do with the internal hardware structure how different it is from your other or existing hardware structures that understanding takes lot of time that is the reason why it is said it is difficult to design system software from not writing a program perspective program writing is a is a different task that you can we need to write for system software we need to write for application software also but the difficulty level here is understanding so if you suppose some, somebody comes you develop something for a library management system it will not take more than half an hour for a developer to understand what the client is asking but whereas in the case of system software it is very 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 difficult to understand because it is not understanding only client perspective but you need to understand from the underlying hardware perspective that is the only reason why we say system software is difficult to design in comparison with application software then of course we need to write everything in the machine level language maybe in assembly level language to some extent today we have a different software that might be easy but design is very important which is going to take lot of time and lot of energy as well. so next manipulation we cannot manipulate for example we have a atm system today 500 rupee notes are there tomorrow 500 rupee notes have been removed and 1000 rupee notes are introduced it may take hardly a, a day or two for the system to manipulate and start distributing 1000 rupee notes from your atm because it is a application software whereas in the case of system software you cannot do those changes in, uh, in less time now it will take maybe you need to repair completely from the scratch or you need to uh, replace it with some other software or if it is possible we can try to manipulate with great difficulty so if that is the case system software manipulation is not easy it is as good as redesigning because everything is intrinsically connected if you do some change it is going to have a ripple effect on the other changes or other processes so you need to be very very careful whereas in this application software it is not going to be that case you can always manipulate you can always redesign we can always change without much difficulty and again system software is very very close to the hardware of the system thereby it is very difficult to manipulate since it is very close to the hardware of the system the speed of system software is very very huge very very fast rather because if you look at the hierarchy of a speed we have a register processor we have your uh, ram we have your rom we have your cache memory we have your secondary memory we have your virtual memory when you look at this the speed of processor registers is like a jet speed they can travel around light speed because they are very very close to the processor it doesn't take much time just you want something it can execute next level we have a your ram ram is slightly away from the your processor it need to connect through bus and it may take some time but again it is also fast compared to that if you have a secondary memory which is too far away from the not i'm not talking about a physical distance point of view i'm talking from on the connection point of view internally so it takes lot of travel between uh, secondary memory and your ram area thereby secondary memory is not that fast compared to your ram and the processor so why that is happening that is happening because how closely you can connect with your hardware if you can if your system can be connected or your hardware can be connected with your uh, internal structure like a kernel or your peripherals which are inside core system rather then the speed of operation will be obviously high whereas if you are not connecting to that extent your speed of operations might not be that great so if that is the case system software since it is very closely connected with the hardware its speed is going to be tremendous very fast whereas application software they are not going to depend on that they only depend on the software the tool that is going to be used thereby their speed cannot be compared with the system software because they are not at par with the system software speed so these are the characteristics or the features with which we can identify system software now so let us come back to our uh, discussion of course outcomes so course outcomes at the end of this 
three months discussion what you are going to learn today i mean what you are going to learn in the semester so we should be able to understand the difference between application software and system software that we have started today as we grow you should be able to have a clear distinction between which software you can say it is system software which software you can say application software without any confusion if you still have confusion in any of the system software subject then something wrong with us we have not discussed properly so you should be able to question yourself and question me if you are not able to clearly distinguish between system software and application software at the end of the course then probably we need to revisit something and clarify our doubts second you should be able to analyze just now we have seen that the mission is very important hardware is very important so what type of software you are going to develop and what type of differences or changes or challenges it can have what type of software means it can be either system software or application software when you want to develop them what is the role or influence of your hardware or the mission on this software so we know that system software is majorly influenced by mission architecture whereas application software is not influence to that extent maybe a very very minimal extent so that anal analysis you should be able to do or you will be able to do rather next you should be able to identify because we will be talking about maybe some three to four system software here maybe an assembler compiler macro processor and to some extent loader all these things we are going to discuss and you should be you will be having each one is independent assembler is different compiler is different loader is different micro processor and macro processor is different you will see from those perspective how individual system software are going to be designed so those design principles also will be able to understand then you will be able to write pro this is what we wanted to give an add on as we said earlier earlier syllabus we had some programs that those programs are not there with you but still we would like to have an uh, idea of how we can develop a system software when time permits we would like to have some 3 to 4 hour session on lex and ac tools these are the tools that are used for compilation process under unix environment we would like to have you some understanding of system software development specifically compiler using these tools so that is what we have used here to so that you can write some programs in order to understand how system software works that is the one of the course outcome you should be expecting at the end you should be able to analyze the architecture of real time system so what we have discussed so far is a need for the architecture so tomorrow somebody says you develop something for pentium 3 so you should be able to understand what is a pentium 3 then start developing so you will be able to analyze or the understand the need for architecture of a real time system so that you can develop some of the software what is asked by the client or whoever it is so this is the idea with which this course outcomes have been uh, stipulated and end of the course you should be able to gain all this to the greater extent so this is what the today's discussion and later the last topic is what is the relevance of the topic of system software the relevance of the topic is nothing but now you should be able to tell me because we have discussed in length what is this system software and what is application software the relevance of the topic is nothing but since you want to develop a software which is going to be a system developer or system oriented or system integrated developer software you should understand the hardware behind this then only you will be able to develop so that is the relevance of this particular course so probably we'll take more inputs in this in the future classes so this is the uh, brief introduction about system software so with this probably we can wind up the today's session so quickly you may have the attendance as the uh, let me only check one second yes i will aishwarya ambrish sir anu yes sir yes ashok yes sir vinita yes, sir. yeah chaitra present sir manjunath yes sir yes deepika lg deepika mb yes sir yes sir krishna yes guria present sir present sir yes ashit present sir jinjar Kavya, Kishor, Lata, yes, sir. Manjunath, yes, sir. Nishant, 
Pavitra. Yes, sir. Maithili. Yes, sir. Priyanka. Yes, sir. Pavan. Present. Akash. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Rajeshwari. Yes, sir. Akesh. Yes, sir. Ramya. Present, sir. Rashmi. Present, sir. Rizwan. Savita. Yes, sir. Shruti. Present, sir. Spurti. Present, sir. Srinidhi. Present, sir. Srinivas. Yes, sir. Sunil. Yes, sir. Vaishnavi. Present, sir. Vinny. Yes. Fine. Thank you. Yes. Sir, Aishwarya present, sir. Aishwarya. Ah, yes, yes. Thank you. Sir, Arjun. Okay. Sir, Bhavisha present. Arjun, yes, Arjun is there. Bhavisha. Okay, yes, yes then. Yes, yes. Thank you.